God, please heal my marriage. God, how am I going to pay this off? God, I can't believe this doctor's report. God, please save my son. God, I need a breakthrough. Sometimes I can't get free. Maybe that's not your testimony, but sometimes I get stuck in a moment, stuck in a habit, stuck in my flesh, and I can't seem to break free. Seem to break free. And I try with all my might. And I just get frustrated and I give up again. Please don't judge me. I know chains aren't easy. We don't like to look at chains. They're uncomfortable. But they're a reality of the spirit world and the devil wants to hold you hostage. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I wish I just had one. I wish I had one person who would worship with me, yeah. I didn't say cheer for me, I said worship with me. Cause if you worship with me, you'll identify with my pain, you'll identify with my weakness, but you won't judge me, you won't laugh at me, you won't talk about me, you'll understand that I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna move like this, I don't wanna live like this. Jesus, can you work with this? Can you work with a man with some chains on him? Can you work with a sister with some chains on him? Can you work with some people with some chains on him? Can you free a bunch of people with some chains on him? I'm gonna ask you at the beginning of the message if you'll give the Lord a praise that makes him understand that you won't stop with your chains. Lord of praise that lets him really know that you won't stop even with your chains. See you do it again. Oh. See you do it again. Lord, 
Lord Jesus, in this atmosphere, I pray that you will speak to your people and free us from chains of bondage, the ones that we see and the ones we can't see. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Can somebody give God a praise? Even through chains. Acts chapter 16. Verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly. suddenly. No, that was nice. Somebody say suddenly. suddenly. I know it's difficult because the idea of having chains and preaching with chains on is an uncomfortable thing to look at. And I wanted it to stay here for a second. And I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains were loosed. Suddenly, immediately, everyone. Suddenly, immediately, everyone. I've been in church too long. I've seen religion gone bad, where people come to a service like this, hear nice things, and leave the same way they walked in. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, but tonight I need God to break free. I need God to break through. And apparently there are nine other people. But if you came out in this weather, Houston, then you might as well get what you came for. You didn't brave streets that other people wouldn't drive on to walk out of here the same way. We are in the Speed Of series, and uh, we started out with the Speed Of? Purpose. purpose. Last week was the Speed Of? Authority. Authority. And this week is the Speed Of? Breakthrough. breakthrough. Is there anybody that needs a breakthrough in some area of their life? The first key to getting a breakthrough is acknowledging that there's something that is holding you hostage. Most church folk will scream whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And we speak it from an external place, but we never deal with the internal reality that our lives don't line up with the things we've been saying. Tonight I want to show you, through this little tiny, uncomfortable illustration, how easily the enemy can sneak in, set up places of bondage, and constantly remind you of the worst versions of yourself. But he is a liar, and he is defeated. And God is looking for someone tonight to be the first one to break out on your row. And I don't know who it is, and I don't know when it will happen, but it will happen at some point for somebody. And if you're the first one, all you need is one other person. And I'll show you what the Word says about it in just a minute. The speed of breakthrough. In the Scripture, we read, Acts chapter 16, but we, if you want to see how Paul and Silas ended up in prison, you've got to rewind about 10 verses to realize that Paul and Silas were actually in the region preaching. And they were preaching and they were literally doing the work of God. And there were some people there that had a little girl who had a spirit on her. And the spirit basically was a fortune telling spirit. And it made these guys money. She was also crying out, basically saying, hey, you got to listen to these guys. These guys, these guys, they, they represent God. And it got on their nerves because even though what the demon in her was saying was true, her witness was tainted. God's not just going to let anybody bear witness of his power and of his holiness. 
days of playing games are over. God is looking for someone who will be honest and speak the truth in love. But if you've got something in your life that's been holding you hostage, that's had you in bondage, it's time to deal with it, give it to Jesus, get free from it, and never look back. Can I get one amen in here? Well, they were in Rome, and the Romans were offended because as soon as Paul said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of that girl, the spirit had to leave, and they realized that their money was gone, and their way of making money was gone, and it made them so angry that they brought Paul and Silas before the legal authorities, and they said, look, these guys are preaching something that we as Romans aren't even legally able to do. They're stirring up trouble. I don't like it. You need to get rid of these cats, put them in prison, because I'm sick of it. The Bible says that they beat them with many rods. Beat them because they cast out a demon. You know, some people will get mad because they would rather stay in bondage then let you speak a word of deliverance over them. In 2018, make sure you're around people who want to be as free as you. Ask a couple people, do you want to be free? Ask them, just ask them, ask them. Wait for them to answer. But they were talking about, no, then. The Bible says that it was midnight. They beat them. They didn't just put them in prison. This is what it says. They, they put them in prison, threw them into prison, commanded the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, the jailer put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So not only did they have chains on their hands, they had chains on their feet. So not only am I imprisoned, I'm isolated and immobile, imprisoned, isolated, and immobile. Say it, imprisoned, imprisoned. isolated, isolated. Immobile. immobile. That is the trifecta for the enemy to take you out. He wants to put you in a prison, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual. He wants to put you in prison because prison cuts you off from the general population, from the regular folk, from real life. He wants you to be in prison in your mind. He wants you to rehearse the things that you did wrong. He wants you to rehearse all the places where you failed. He wants you to remember, Dad, gone. I was so close to getting free, but now I'm in bondage. And not only were they in prison, but they were isolated. They were in the inside of the prison. They, were in, they couldn't even look out the window. They were in there. And then, to make it worse, it's one thing if I'm in prison, at least I can walk around my, my cell. But scripture says that they put their feet in the stocks, which means I'm not even gonna let you move around inside prison. How many of us have ever felt stuck? See, everybody gets excited about the, the title, the speed of breakthrough, but you can't break through if you ain't in bondage. The church always runs to the end, but let's start at the beginning. How did I get to midnight? Trying to help somebody on the side. <laughs> How did I get to midnight? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in midnight? Do you have a midnight that you can recall? Or do you currently have a midnight situation in your life? See, let me, let me help you to understand what midnight is. Midnight, it, it, it gets no darker than midnight. That's it. It is the absence of light. There is, there's no vision at midnight. Midnight is the darkest time. It, it's, it's, it's the stuff that nightmares are made of, midnight. And not only was it midnight, but they were in prison. And prison's not a, a, a kind, sweet place. Be stuck, immobile, isolated, imprisoned at midnight. It's a time where you lose hope. It's a time where you lose faith. It's a time where there's no joy. It's a time when there is no sound but a sound of despair. It's where you complain. It's where you say, God, I didn't just wake up and want to fail. 
Is she, how come my father wasn't there to cover me and raise me? How come my mother wasn't there? How come my brother did what he did? How come that person abused me? I ended up in a prison that I did not choose. There are people amongst us right now and those who are watching online who are in prisons that they did not choose. They did not ask to be born. They did not ask to be beaten. They did not ask to be abused. And yet, the chains still come. The church doesn't do well with chains. We do well with celebration. We do well with hallelujah. We do well with your miracle is on the way. But I'm going to stay right here in this uncomfortable reality to show that most of us never deal with our chains. Well, let me not talk about you. Let me talk about me. Because sometimes there are chains you see and then there are the chains you don't see. Because the truth is, we all put on our masks because everybody doesn't want to see our chains. They don't want to know the pain that we're in. It's, it's too uncomfortable. But the Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And we know that the truth is the truth of the gospel, the truth that comes from the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. But Jesus doesn't come just to save you and deliver you. He also comes as a mirror to reveal you. What many of us have an uncomfortable reality is facing the true condition of who we are so that God can actually deal with the broken places because until we deal with the broken places, we can never get to the place called breakthrough. And here's the thing, you can be in bondage for years and God could turn it around just like that. Yeah, I need you to get your hope up because it's a little quiet, y'all trying to figure out What's wrong? Because chains are uncomfortable, but that's the reality of prison. Whether you know it or not, no one came in here having not been in some prison, mental, emotional, or spiritual at some point in their life. If you walked in here perfect, then you're in the wrong place because you can't use Jesus. You don't need Jesus. If you had it all together, if you've done it all yourself, then this is the wrong place. This is a place for people with chains. This is a place for people who've been hurt, who've been wounded. Watch this. Maybe some people put you in chains or maybe you put them on yourself. The worst prisons are the ones we have the keys to. I'm about to preach it like I feel it. I said, I'm going to preach it like I feel it. I've been living in an uncomfortable dichotomy. The reality of the church that celebrates in an Americanized Christianity versus the, the, the New Testament reality at the early days of the church when people were speaking to demons and they were coming out right away. But now we don't have that. People stay in bondage for years, come to church every week and still don't get delivered. That is not what the Word says. Something is wrong when that demon still feels comfortable in your life and you've been in the choir 20 years. You've been... You've been ushering all these years. You've been on prayer team all these years and you still can't get free from that thing. You still can't get delivered and somehow you think that's okay. Well, I guess it's my cross to bear. No, take up your cross and follow me. Your cross is the responsibility of the gospel, not sin. Nobody wants to talk about sin. We want to sweep it under the rug, but it's sin that got us in this bondage in the first place. Real quiet in here, but I'm going to preach the gospel in here. We need the blood. We need the blood. We need the blood. We need the blood. We need Jesus. We need Jesus because only he can break the chain. What did Jesus say when he got up out of the ground? Anybody know? He said, I have the keys. All authority has been given to me in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That means he got the keys. Tell somebody Jesus has the keys. Has the keys. So if you really want to get free, you might want to go to the one who has the keys. Nobody's writing this down, but I'm going I'm to I'm just keep lifting up Jesus for the next 10 minutes. I said, if, if you really want to get free, you're going to have to get to Jesus. I, I noticed in my life, Sam, that there were some areas 
that I've been lingering, allowing to fester. Uncomfortable places. See, because here's the thing about prison. You could be walking around free and still be in prison. Oh, yeah. You can clap, you can jump, you can shout and still have chains that people don't see. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. I've been there. I've been there places. I've been in pain since I was 10 years old. I've been in every church all across this nation and around the world. And very few of those leaders have ever said, hey, man, how's your soul? Sometimes people aren't so concerned with your chains as long as you're helping them get gains. But I need somebody in this church to know that I'm going to get free whether you see it or not, whether you help me or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, but I am not going to come to church every week, serve y'all, serve people, and die in bondage. It's real quiet in here, real quiet in here. Somebody say the speed of breakthrough. It was midnight. There was no light. There was no revelation. But Paul had the nerve at midnight to do something that most people don't do in the middle of the day. See, right now, midnight and day, night and day for you, let's just say it like this. Midnight is when, you're, when your money is low, when there's drama in your marriage. Midnight is when the kids just, that you keep getting negative reports. That your, your child has a problem with discipline. They don't, they don't listen in school. They, they don't listen at the house either, honey, so just join the club. Midnight is when life doesn't make sense. Midnight is when the pain shows up that you thought you were free from and it lingers. It just shows up. You didn't even know it was there. And it, it, it shows up. You listen to the wrong song. You watch the wrong thing. And now you're hurting over a relationship from eight years ago. You didn't even know it was still in your soul because you had never dealt with that thing. And so there was a hidden chain. It hinders your worship. It hinders your praise. It hinders your hallelujah. It hinders your God, I give you glory. But what's funny is even in the daytime, it's hard for some of us to praise. What's the daytime? You got a job. Other people don't even have that. You got options for clothes and you still complaining. I need a new outfit. No, you need to thank God for the ones you have. I don't like this food in this cupboard. Some people don't have a cupboard or food. Hmm. This car, I don't know. This, hmm. And there are people outside tonight trying to figure out if they'll have enough blankets to keep them from getting frostbite. Some of us have far more than we know of, and we haven't thanked God for what we do have. So before you ask for the next thing, thank him for what you have right now. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. See, here's the thing. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. Now, I don't know what they prayed. I know what I would have prayed. God, get me out of this. This is crazy. They about to kill me. I don't know what he prayed, but I do know he sang praises. Now, that's a strange combination. Not only am I in prison, I'm on the inside of the prison, and I'm immobilized. I can't move my hands or my feet, but they didn't put a mute on my voice. I don't know who this is for, but the enemy may have immobilized your bank account, but he ain't immobilized your mouth. If you can open your mouth, if you can open your mouth, even if you can't move, your mouth can make moves for you. Is there anybody in here that will open your mouth, even though you might be stuck in a moment, stuck in a habit, stuck in a sin, stuck in a bad situation? The enemy has pulled out all the stops and you cannot get free.
Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God, and the prisoners were listening. Look at somebody telling them, somebody's listening. You know, somebody needs your worship. I'm trying to help y'all. Listen, God loves you, and he receives your worship. He doesn't need your worship. God doesn't need worship. God is not needy. God is not up there like, I sure hope they sing me a song. <laughs> he doesn't need anything because he's God. He welcomes our worship. He receives our worship, but he does not need our worship. You know who needs worship? A soul that's broken. Somebody whose heart is crushed. Because when you start worshiping, you're helping somebody else to get their hope up, to get their faith up, because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm trying to help you because I know people think some of y'all are weird. You're too loud, you shout too much, you, you, you wave too much, you make people uncomfortable. It doesn't take all that. And I didn't grow up in that type of expression. And there's nothing wrong with people who come from a more conservative or, or, or a different type of background. There's nothing wrong with that. But every now and then, I need an every now and then person on each row. I just, I just need a every, every now and then. Every now Every now and then, I just need somebody that will make a sound that will get my attention off the chains I'm in. The Bible says, Ramon, that the prisoners were listening. Now, you know, if you're in prison, People going to listen because they going to talk at night. Man, you ain't getting out of here. Man, you shut up. You ain't getting out of here either. Well, man, you know you stole something. They going to cut your hand off in the morning. Well, you kick somebody. They going to cut your foot off. You just going to be walking around here limping, just limpy McJohnson. That's what you going to be. You know what cuts through the despair? You know what cuts through the, the shame, the guilt, the condemnation? All of them people complaining. And it was two over here in the cut. It takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. I want to praise right now. I'm John Gray and I came to get down. I'm not internationally known. But I'm known to rock the microphone because I get stupid. I mean outrageous. Roll out with me. My praise is contagious. Heaven loves me. God adores me. Even the ones who never saw me like the way that I rock my flow. The reason why, man, I don't know. So let's go. I just need one other person, Pastor Steve, when I'm in prison, that will stay with me and believe God can deliver me. Because I've had chains on me for years that no one sees. And it's infected my marriage, my children, my family, held me hostage, never thought I'd get free. But tonight, they have to leave in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, they have to go! I need somebody to get out of that seat and I need you to break free. I need you to break free. Now don't get quiet now. Worship for the people that aren't here. Come here, Keith, hurry up. Hurry up, y'all keep worshiping, hurry up. Keep worshiping. I need you to understand. Last week, his mother was in the hospital.
responsive, we declared that something was going to shift by the time he got there. Can you tell the people what happened when you got back? Talk in the mic and hurry up. Well, I brought my iPhone to her and she didn't have her eyes open at the moment, but she heard John's voice and she heard the sermon. And I had to start it all over from the beginning because she said, let me hear it all. <laughs> Hold on, freeze right there. She couldn't talk, heard the word, said, rewind that. I don't know who this is for, but the devil thought he had you. You need to tell, help, rewind that. What did you say about me? Is there a promise over my life? Why that? Okay, so then, so then what happened? So she heard the music. She, heard she had a feeding tube in her mouth, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was intubated. Uh huh. Okay. So when she heard the music from the band, she opened her eyes because she liked the church music. So once John, once John started dancing, she seen the dancers, she started moving her whole body. So she went from eyes closed, unresponsive, not talking, to hearing the word, rewind that, to in her bed, she starts trying to dance. Now how's mama doing that? So over the weekend, the doctor told us her legs was weak, she wasn't gonna be able to walk, we're gonna have to rehab her for at least a month. So I took a nap on, uh, I lost where we at now because of, of the winter. Uh, <laughs> on Tuesday, I woke up from a nap and my sister said, Mama is walking. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God and the prisoners heard and immediately the foundation of the prison was shaken and every... Let me do this. You want to say something else? So it was Tuesday. Everything happened in seven days. Thank you. Didn't I say that by the time he got back here, God will have turned it around? Did it, was anybody here when I said it? You will have a testimony in seven days. In seven days, God turned it around. Why? Because life is now moving at the speed of breakthrough. I need somebody to give him a breakthrough. No, no, no. No, no, no. I feel something in here. Some of y'all like, should I stand up? Should I sit down? You better stay right where you are. You feel it too. Don't, don't, get, don't get nervous. You feel that thing. The Bible says the prisoners heard them. Somebody's waiting for somebody to make a sound that breaks through midnight. I said somebody's looking for somebody to make a sound that breaks through midnight. Pastor Phil, I bet you can praise at midnight. Cindy, I know you can praise at midnight. So that's two of y'all on that row. Deidre, I know you can praise at midnight. Mama, I know you can praise at midnight. Hope, Hope, I know you can praise at midnight. You done went through all kinds of surgeries and transplants and ain't no reason for your hands to be up. And here you are praising. I, I wonder if there's at least two per row. I want you to do that and I'm gonna read what happened. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And the foundations 
of the prison were shaken. Foundation symbolic of the, the multiple places that can hold you hostage. Sickness, disease, iniquity, generational curses, habits, sins, hidden sins. I ain't talking to you about what I heard. I'm talking to you about what I know. Preaching the gospel does not make you immune to the attack of the enemy. In fact, the attack is much harder. I was fully prepared to step up here to say tonight will be my last sermon because the enemy hit me so hard that I literally felt like walking away and giving up. But God said, get up, get on that platform and you don't stand up in your own strength or your own power or your own authority, but you go in the authority of my son and you tell them that whom the son sets free is free indeed and you don't have to be held hostage to the worst moment of your life. I need somebody to give God a praise right there. Praise is nice at noon, but it counts at midnight. I said it, it's nice when it's going all well that you can praise, but it counts at midnight when nothing makes sense. See, when you, when you have gifts, people don't really ask you a lot. I've been in them chains. But chains make people uncomfortable. How could Paul sing with chains on? Well, he had had an encounter with the real Jesus. I'm getting ready to help somebody in here. See, you can't sing at midnight if you just have a religious Jesus. Or if you have a surface, a reg occasional attendance Jesus. Nah. He was on the road to Damascus. He was still breathing, the Bible says, threats and murder over Christians and had just gotten letters from the synagogue that if he found anyone of the way, that he could bring them in chains to Jerusalem so that they could be tried, convicted, and killed. Saul meant business. I'm going to kill them all. Jesus showed up, knocked him off his high horse. I don't know who this is for, but there's some people messing with you. God's about to knock them off their high horse. They think they have power over you. God's about to show them who has all the power. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I love it. He said, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, you are now my Lord. He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> the one whom you persecute. It's hard to kick against the goals. He said, tell me what to do. He said, go on down to the city. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And from that moment on, he went from being the greatest attack dog of the church to the greatest advocate of the gospel that the New Testament records. So at midnight, he had the unmitigated audacity facing real possibility of further punishment and death. And he just gonna sit in the prison and be like, you know, they might kill us in the morning. Yeah. Got these chains on us. Yeah. And they all complaining. Yeah. What you want to do? Oh, how I love thee. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Why are you singing hymns and you still in chains? 
unless those chains aren't chains, but an opportunity for God to show the chains who has more power, these chains or my worship. Do you know there is a certain sound frequency that can actually break metal? Woo! I'm getting ready to help you. Do you know there's a sound that can come out of your mouth that can break natural and spiritual chains? And it don't have to take years. It could have took you years to be in that bondage. It'll take you one moment to get free. Some of y'all are getting ready to shout in this moment and you're gonna get free from 30 years of bondage. That's what I came to tell you tonight. I said, that's what I came to tell you tonight. Immediately the foundation of the prison was shaken and everyone bands were loose, which means even if you didn't want to get free, because you heard me praising, God credited your account with my work. I want to know if there's anybody that will agree with me for your whole road. Is there anybody that will agree with me for a supernatural breaking of demonic chains, oppression, soul ties, hidden sin, lust, demons, death, lying spirits. Even at home, if you can, without getting evicted from your house, in 10 seconds, maybe 20, whenever I'm finished talking. I want you to lift up a sound in that house that scares the dog, makes the cat run off, makes the goldfish swim in circles, because there is a sound, and all it takes is two. Rashid, I just need one other person. Anzio, I just, I just need one person to agree with me. If I can get two, then a threefold cord is not easily broken. Now, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, and you're not perfect, but the God that we're worshiping, he's perfect. So if we lift him up, if we lift him up, then maybe the stuff that I can't get free from, he'll just show up and break me out of it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, worship. Glory, 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 glory. Anybody that needs to get free from some chains, get to the altar. Get to the altar, get to the altar, get to the altar. I need, I don't want no soft music. I want some chain breaking. I need a, I need that. I need hit, hit the, hit the cymbals, hit something. I just, I need, I need. Get to the altar.
people are waiting for a miracle at midnight. Most people don't realize while you're waiting for the miracle of midnight, the miracle is midnight. Because it's at midnight that you realize the power of Jesus over your circumstance, power over the chains that have held you hostage. You don't have to wait until midnight tonight to get free. You can get free. I don't know about you, but there are some places in my life that I had to reconcile with God. For many years, because I was talented and gifted and God has put his hand on me, I didn't think I needed to address some things in my character. And as I have been given an unbelievable supernatural opportunity to lead God's people as a senior leader, God says, I'm gonna address this now, right now, because this is the stuff that could kill you in your next place. And I don't know why I chose Aventer because in my flesh, she was far beyond my own ability to see. But God said this to me, he said, I'm sending her to save your life. I remember God saying that to me. Then when I found out that I had severe obstructive sleep apnea because we got married and on our honeymoon, she said, baby, you snore and it's terrible. And I was like, the devil is a lie. I've never heard it. (laughs) By the time I got to my sleep study and the doctors told me, they said, you could have died of cardiac arrest at any moment. God said, remember what I told you. I'm going somewhere. But then there are times when my flesh would rise up and I want to do what I want and I want to say what I want and live how I want. But because I made this covenant, God would always give her vision and she would be like, "Mm, that don't line up with the character of God. I'm like, I ain't trying to hear that. You just need to submit to me. You just need to just listen. And God sent her. And every time I would resent her, it was literally saying, I resent the voice of God. And the Holy Ghost had to teach me and and pu- not punish, but spank. Because the Bible says he does correct those he loves as such. Yeah. So, Ab, I just want to let you know in front of all of these people that those times of unbelievable pride and the times when I resisted and rejected the word of God that was coming from your mouth was a symbol of the demonic uh, mindset, fear, and intimidation, and security, insecurity that was in me for many years. It had nothing to do with you, but it manifested. And for seven years, you have loved what have been a very unlovable man at times. And none of these people see that. But I want to tell you right now that whatever breath I have left in this body, I commit to honoring the anointing that's on your life, and I commit to giving you what the Word says I am to give. I talked a lot. Now it's time to produce. I'm not going to preach to you and lose my family. Nobody going to say amen. That's all right. If I really want to raise my son right, Anzio, you got to treat his mama right. Okay. See, these chains getting on my nerves because they in the way. Every now and then, you got to kick the devil out the way. Ain't no time to be sweet in here. Right now, we need to get a little aggressive with our worship. Now. Hey! What's that part where she says, I hear the chains falling? Can you do that part? feel a breakthrough in the atmosphere. The Bible
Bible says that two men prayed and sang praises in prison and immediately the foundations of the prison were shaken, Pastor Craig, and everyone's bands were loosed. I, I need to believe tonight was not an exercise in religious futility. I need to know that God freed me from some stuff. <laughs> Pastor Craig, will you agree with me that tonight was a breakthrough for me? And I'll agree that tonight is a breakthrough for you and a breakthrough for everything that you've ever had to walk through and every place where you have been misunderstood, overlooked, and undervalued, I pray that God will bring a sevenfold, no, a hundredfold return on everything you've ever sown, you and your household, your wife. May God bless the work of your hands. Is there anybody else in here that needs God to do a right now miracle? I'm extending my faith to you right now, and I declare by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, who has all power, I have faith to believe that if he can deliver me in a moment, he can do the same for you. It doesn't mean that deliverance doesn't come with responsibility because things need to change. But tonight is about what we couldn't do on our own. I believe that we will hear reports of people who were addicted to substances and people, and by this time next week, the desire will be gone and the root of it will be gone. And you're gonna come in here and you're gonna have a shout, you're gonna have a jump, you're gonna have a dance, you're gonna have a hallelujah on you because your life is now moving at the speed of breakthrough. Does anybody believe breakthrough is here right now? Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, in this atmosphere right here, right now, I declare for those who literally went through snow and ice. First of all, God, everybody here gets home safely with no accidents, not one accident. They won't even be near an accident. Everybody gets home safe in the name of Jesus. That's number one. Number two, we will hear miracle reports of people that got free tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost because the speed of breakthrough, all I need is an encounter with Jesus and one person to agree. And if I can get one person to agree, my whole situation can change, Brandon. I know you agree with me. I need somebody that will agree. Not just, will you fight for me when I can't fight for me? Will you pray for me when I can't pray for me? So Lord, it is in this atmosphere that we throw our chains at the feet of the one who was beaten beyond recognition for us. He who was nailed to the cross for our sins, our shame, our guilt. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We are now moving at the speed of breakthrough. It says suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Immediately. Immediately. It says everyone's bands were loose and the doors were open. People don't preach on that. I'm just declaring right now at the end of this, you don't have enough room to shout. You're getting ready to step through the open door. The open door. The God opportunity, the one that makes no sense. You didn't see it coming. You're about to get the call. God's gonna open the door. He's gonna provide the resource. He's going to connect the relationship. God's about to do it. Somebody down here is shouting because she's getting free. Anybody else believe that you're stepping into the season of the open door? I know it's late, so I got to let you go. But we already here, so we might as well get everything we can. For. Freedom from bondage open doors, new opportunities, deliverance from your enemy, and freedom from generational curses. What held your mama hostage and grandma hostage will not hold you hostage. What held my daddy hostage and my granddaddy hostage and my uncle's hostage will not hold me hostage. 
Well, now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're in here and you've never given your life to Jesus, you're in here, you've never given your life to Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. If you're in here, you need to give your life to Jesus, or you need to rededicate. This moment is for you. On the count of three, all I want you to do is throw both of your hands up if I'm talking to you. If there was ever a night to give your life to Jesus, tonight is the night, because your life and your soul are moving at the speed of breakthrough. One, two, three. Throw your hands up if I'm talking to you. Look at that. Welcome home. Oh, y'all need to do better than this.